Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another Magic the Gathering Commander review. Uh, as I've said in previous videos, let me know what you guys think as far as like maybe a tier list after I'm done with the Legend set of all these commanders and where I think they fit. Uh, today we are talking about Hazazon Tamar. Hazazon Tamar is a legendary human warrior, 2-4, and it costs 4 generic mana. One white, one green, and one red mana to play. And I'll read the oracle text off my phone here, because it's a little more clear than what you're seeing right now. Uh, when Hazazon Tamar enters the battlefield, create X11 sand warrior creature tokens that are red, green, and white at the beginning of your next end step. Or your next upkeep. Whoa. Oh no. That's a long time to wait for those sand warriors. Uh, where X is the number of lands you control at that time. When Hazazon leaves the battlefield, exile all sand warriors. That's very important. Let's talk about the rulings, then I'll explain some more of that. <coughs> um, when the uh, when Hazazon's second ability resolves, all permanents with both the sand and warrior creature types are exiled. Not just sand warrior creature tokens, it created. Permanents that have just one of those types are unaffected. So if you have just a sand token, which or a sand creature, uh, which there are none as far as I'm aware, or just a warrior creature, which there are a lot of, um, thankfully, Anything that's just a warrior will stay. Anything that is a sand and warrior does get exiled. And I think that's referring to like the name of the token is a sand warrior. Um, not just the creature type. So I think that's kind of weird wording there and why that works that way. So your normal warriors will be fine if Hazazon is removed from play. Um, the first ability creates a delayed trigger. So when Hazazon enters the battlefield, you won't immediately get those tokens. You have to wait a turn uh, before you get those tokens. And uh, lastly, only sand warriors that are actually on the battlefield when Hazazon Tamar leaves the battlefield are affected when its second ability resolves. Um, if Hazazon leaves the battlefield after the delayed trigger ability created by the first ability triggers, but before oh, okay, wow, <laughs> but before this ability resolves, its second ability triggers and resolves first. Then the sand warriors are put onto the battlefield. Those sand warriors will remain on the battlefield indefinitely. Um, that is very cool to note. So. Since Hazazon's first ability waits until your next upkeep after you've played Hazazon, if someone removes Hazazon uh, before that happens, you still get the Sand Warriors, is what it's saying. So, a good source of protection if Hazazon is removed before the tokens are made. Uh, I chose Goblin Bombardment as my synergistic card with Hazazon because uh, if Hazazon is removed and you have Sand Warriors in play, let's get some value off of them and just start flinging them at your opponent. Preferably the opponent who removed Hazazon, kind of as a stick it to the man, kind of last minute move, like this is what you get when you attack me. Uh, so not may maybe in that game you're going to get hit hard and you're going to hit your opponent hard back. But in the next game, they're gonna know not to uh, not to mess with you because you will throw an army of sand warriors right at them if they do. Uh, the deck that I am gonna have Hazazon in is a land matters deck, and uh, because of the variety of lands that Wizards has printed over the years, this is going to specifically be a desert land matters deck. So there'll be some landfall in the deck there'll be some desert matter cards in the deck. Uh, actually, as many desert matter cards as possible. Um, so, Hour of Promise is a desert matters card. You're gonna be able to search your library for lands, and then if you control deserts, you get to make zombie tokens. Uh, Nahiri's Lithoforming, 
deserts uh, can have abilities in play, but they also will give you benefits if they're in the graveyard. So sacrificing all of your deserts is good, and then you'll be able to get more deserts out of your library, plus other cards to play with Nahiri's Lithoforming, which is really fun. Uh, and then of course, Desert of the True, just one of the many deserts in these colors that you're going to be putting in this deck. If you wanted to focus just on the tokens of this deck and really go hard on filling the board quickly and then dealing a lot of damage, uh, Awaken the Woods is a great card to play before playing Hazazim because these are land dryad lands and so they will count towards your production of uh, making sand warriors so you want to play that get a bunch of lands in play and then make even more land dryads and then you get anointed procession into play any token doubling effect this is just the one that I picked when then when Hazazon makes the tokens it'll double the amount of tokens that are made and roar of resistance will give all those creatures haste so you can kind of you can kind of build up to this moment. Maybe you do Anointed Procession first, and then you play Awaken the Woods, get a huge amount of tokens to protect yourself, ramp quite a bit, and get that land requirement for Hazazen. And then you play Hazazen next turn. Uh, during that same turn, you play Roar of Resistance. And then next turn, Hazazen triggers, makes a ton of tokens and then all those tokens are doubled because of anointed procession they all have haste because of roar of resistance's first ability you swing out you win the game in one attack really fun and lastly you can do a warrior tribe in this deck there are a lot uh, there are a lot of warrior support cards like you're looking at now but uh there are also a lot of ways to make warrior tokens outside of the Sand Warriors with Hazazon in these colors. So Kargan and uh, Bramblewood and Herald of Dromoka are just like warrior lords, whether they give them counters, base uh, power toughness boost, or give them keywords to play with. So great ways to strengthen your board. And then there are of course tons of ways to make warrior tokens in these colors. So I have a lot of fun with that. A lot of token synergy, a lot of token strategy uh, in both of these, well, in all of these versions of this deck, but in different styles, which I appreciate. That's what makes this a lot of fun, is it's warrior themed, but in different variations, depending on how you want to play it. So that's going to be Hazazon Tamar. Um, Hazazon can be very explosive if you play with him correctly. Like the token specific strategy that I was talking about, you could be extremely explosive if you pace yourself, you plan ahead, uh, play with a lot of defenses to make sure that your threats aren't going to be targeted by your opponents, um, and then go for a huge swing and win the game in one fell swoop. With that said, Hazazon has no form of base protection, and because of the delayed trigger, um, Hazazon is very fragile. So you want to be careful with how you play Hazazon. Um, if Hazazon gets countered and then you don't even get the ETB delayed trigger, then that's going to be a 7 mana commander to a 9 mana commander. So be careful with Hazazon. As soon as people realize, who you're playing with and what it does, you will have a target on your back. Um, and obviously, nine mana the second time to play is a lot. With that said, you are in green, so you can ramp really well in this deck and really quickly in these colors. So have a lot of fun with Hazazon. I'm excited to play with it. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!